Kodak, the once undisputed giant of the photography industry, they had a 90% market share in the US in 1976. By the year 1984, they were employing 145,000 people. And in 2012, they had a net worth of negative a billion dollars when they went bankrupt. Why? Because they failed to predict the importance of exponential trends when it comes to technology. On the other hand, Instagram, a digital photography company, the same year, 2012, they had 13 employees and they were sold to Facebook for a billion dollars. Now, this is kind of ironic because Kodak pioneered digital photography. They actually invented the first digital camera when they came out in 1975 with the 0.01 megapixel digital camera. But they thought it was a toy and didn't pay attention. So that's what happens with exponentials. We don't pay attention. So let's play a little game with you. Let's be more interactive. It's called 30 Steps. Now imagine I take 30 steps linearly. That's one, two, three. Where do I get if I get to 30? About the end of the stage right there. OK. How about if I take 30 steps exponentially? 2, 4, 8, 16. Where do I get? Where? Outside? Actually, I get to the moon. By the way, this is not to scale. The moon is much farther away. <laughs> and back. And I still have enough steps to circle the Earth eight times over. That's what exponential means. How do I know this? I just asked the Wolfram Alpha. <laughs> now, Foxconn, the world's largest manufacturer of electronic components, they make pretty much anything. So if you've got something on your lap or in your pocket that makes noises and you know it's blinking and bright and probably it's tweeting right now, they made it. Not just Apple, they make anything. It's a multinational corporation worth $100 billion, which employs 1.2 million people. What are they doing? They're automating, of course. In fact, they're about to deploy an army of 1 million robots to cut rising labor expenses and improve efficiency. Canon is doing the same, going fully automated very soon. Lots of other companies are following. Now, what if Walmart follows? Biggest multinational corporation in the world employs 2.1 million people. What if they automate? Well, they can't, right? They don't have the technology to do that. Oh, we most certainly do. Amazon knows this very well. So this is a graph made by a fellow author, um, Andrew McAfee from MIT. We pretty much agree on the analysis. As you, as you can see, profits, investments, they're all going up and up and up for corporate investments and multinational corporations. But the red line, which is the employment to population ratio, is going down and down and down. And we both agree that when it comes to automation, we ain't seen nothing yet. This is the Google autonomous car. You know, the futuristic car that drives itself without a human driver? Yeah. It's, by the way, it's as cool as it sounds. I was inside. This is me at NASA a few months ago. And it's a pretty neat piece of technology. They have all sorts of sensors and lasers and GPS and machine learning algorithms. It drives itself. It's safer, better than any human driver. It doesn't get tired, follow every street rule, never crashes, never breaks any rule whatsoever. Basically, it just works, and it's better than humans. Problem is, 3.6 million people in the United States alone work driving. I mean, they drive for a living. That's 2.6% of the population. Austria and Europe, they have very similar numbers. I think these people might be affected by this kind of, te this kind of technology, don't you? So accounting, retail, manufacturing, uh, translations, uh, no one is safe. Journalism, as the Wall Street Journal, Journal puts it, software is eating the world. So what do we do? Should we despair? So the question is, temperature is rising. How high does it have to rise before we need to worry, before we're in danger, before bad things start happening? Um, the typical answer to this question has been two degrees Celsius. Anyone who has followed climate change discussions knows that this two degree number has taken on a kind of iconic quality. In South Africa, according to the Children's Institute, we have more than 3 million children under the age of 17 that experience household hunger. And that really means they get three meals um, a week, three meals a week, where you and I would have three meals a day. The impact of hunger 
and the hunger sensation of an empty tummy not only has a physical effect but psychologically it degrades human beings and that degrega degradation um, has a devastating effect to that person's self-image which impacts on their outlook towards life and it's a vicious spiral. According to NGO Stop Hunger Now, 925 million people in the world don't have enough to eat. 98% of them live in developing countries like South Africa. 400 million children are starving worldwide. And one in seven people in developing countries suffers from hunger. The question on everyone's mind was finally answered. The UAE's capital held its spot for the second consecutive year for the world's most expensive number plate. Before last night's auction, eight Abu Dhabi plates had held the world record for being the most expensive across the globe. Talal Khouri's famous maroon Rolls Royce holding the priciest. And he was upbeat before the bidding started last night. Uh, actually, I want to give it a chance for some people else uh, because go for sh for charity. Because till now, I uh, I bought, uh, I think I put it uh, up to 80 million uh, dirham. But I think uh, I be I will be going from 15 to 20 million. About 300 people attended the auction and had mixed feelings of whether a world record would be set.